lovely Thursday. Everybody good? Thumbs up. Feeling so good. good. I got my G pair this morning. I had to had to clean it all up when I got to the office. It was a little crazy. Why? <laughs> what do you mean? A G pair. You gotta, oh, driving G-pair. driving. To, Oh. Driving to town with a top down, you know, it gets a little crazy, Steve. That's awesome. You got to do that with that Jeep, man. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So it's Thursday. We got a great show for you. Let's start with our video. See what we got. Now, earlier, we looked in some guys' houses. We looked for clues by snooping around their house just to see what they were like. Well, you can also tell a lot about someone by what they put on their cars. <laughs> These are some of the craziest bumper stickers that I've found recently. Here's one right here. I was an honor student. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Here's another one. Horn broke, watch for finger. Yeah. How about this one right here? I tell you to go to hell, but I work there and I don't want to see you every day. <laughs> I like this one right here. Driving with my wife makes me wish I were hitchhiking. <laughs> All right, here's another good one. I childproof my house, but they still get in. <laughs> Ladies, I have your favorite one right here. You ready? Yeah. Here it is. Men are idiots, and I married their king. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been a great hour. Thanks so having mute, unmute issues this morning. Sorry about that. So I can't stand bumper stickers. I don't know about you guys, just my opinion, can't stand it. I don't really care about your opinion. You wanna tell me something? Tell me something, I don't need to read it on the back of your car. Anyway, Steve Harvey's funny though. So uh, let's move right to announcements, guys. Dan, we have a lot to announce. Uh, Today at 11 o'clock, today at 11 o'clock, command for the MREA. I don't know if you guys saw Debbie Orr's email this morning, but that doesn't mean you have to be a millionaire real estate agent already to go to this class. It's for everybody, <laughs> right? Everybody who wants to be a millionaire real estate agent, right? I, um, I love that. I, I saw that email and I was like, oh God, I hope, <laughs> I hope uh, you know people actually asked her that. Is this only yeah. for MRE if you're, if you're making a million dollars? Right. No, 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 no. Everything we talk about is to help you become a millionaire real estate agent. <laughs> so. So go to this class and become a millionaire real estate agent. Debbie's going to talk about Absolutely. opportunities today. Opportunities. I love opportunities. Don't you? They're awesome. One Absolutely. O'clock, one o'clock today, uh, we have the Art of Mortgage Lending with Westport Mortgage. Uh, they've put together a great class, guys. So put that on your calendar, one o'clock in the Zoom room. I believe it's in the Zoom room. We're going to get to Karen Moe read in a second. Um, and then tonight, uh, Dan and I are doing career night, 5.30. I know uh, several of you have reached out to me. I don't know if Dan, if you've heard of a couple, but um, some of you are sending people, yeah. so that's awesome. I think we have about ten people RSVP'd right now, so okay, um, from up here, that's yeah. awesome. And then I do want to jump ahead till Monday. Monday at eleven o'clock. This is very exciting. For those of you who are newer to our family, you may not know about Dave Ramsey and Financial Peace. That session starts at 11 o'clock. What's better than the summer with Dave Ramsey, right? 11 o'clock on Monday. Rick Scott, would you like to say something about Dave Ramsey and what this class is all about? Sure, good morning, everybody. Uh, If you don't know Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, uh, I highly, highly encourage you to dive into uh, this session. It's a a uh, nine-session course. Uh, and now about an hour apiece. We're going to do it Mondays and Fridays for the next four four plus weeks <clears throat> uh, to be able to get you through uh, that session. It, it's it, if you have an, a penny of debt, you should be in this uh, in this session. If you don't have any debt, you should be in this session. I can t- I, I've been through this session this course about ten or twelve times, and every single time I go through it, I learn something that helps me financially. So. Um, do plug in 
11 o'clock on Monday for at least that first session to kind of get your feet wet and see what, the, what it's all about. I'll give you more information uh, then, but it's tips, tricks, strategies, and Dave is really funny. So, uh, so it, it's, a, uh, it's an awesome, uh, awesome experience. I know a bunch of you on this, uh, on this call um, have been through it. I know a bunch of you really advocate for it. I know Jeannie, Donna, um, uh, real, real true advocates for, for this program and, and what it does for people and their finances. So uh, I encourage you 11 o'clock on Monday. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a great, great session, guys. Um, how many sessions are there? Like nine? Nine. Okay, right. Mo uh, Monday, 11 o'clock. Uh, Monday, one o'clock, Agent Financials, keeping, keeping with the theme, a great KW class. And uh, if you need to brush up on your financials, be there one o'clock on Monday. Look for more inf information on that coming out by tomorrow. Okay, that's the end of our announcements, I think. And I want to turn it over to Westport. You, you missed one, Steve. You what? missed one announcement. Tell me. You cannot miss the first KW poker night <laughs> since the pandemic. Monday night in the Ridgefield Market Center, we'll have drinks and snacks and things like that. Please send me an email if you're interested. We'll have both. We'll have tables set up for both experienced people who know how to play, as well as people who don't know how to play and maybe want to learn. Um, and we'll have some people there to help you learn as well. So it's uh, open to all experience levels. Just come out. It's, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a bunch of you uh, for the first time in a long time. Uh, KW Poker Night back at the Ridgefield Market Center, 5:30 on Monday. Or five o'clock, I think, on Monday. That's exciting. That's very exciting. That's awesome. You know, Bill McNamara is all giddy. He can't wait. Oh He's yeah, so Bill cannot wait for this. Big poker. He was like one of the first emails that I got. He was like, "Wait, really?" Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. <laughs> Love all right. it. All uh, right, Karen Mulry, where are you, my dear? Hello, everybody. How are you? Um, yeah, Bill and Paul are both big poker players. I am not, so I would be in the learning group, but they are. Um, very good, and they can share with you all their, their tips and tricks on how to play. Um, today, we, I am Karen Mulreed um, at Westport Mortgage. For those of you who don't know, I don't know if I introduced myself, where um, we help realtors sell and help buyers buy. And today at one o'clock, we're going to help more realtors sell and hope help more buyers buy and share with you um, some of our insights and things that we've learned um, to, to help you all. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions from you. Thank you for all your responses. So we are going to answer those questions um, with information about that today. Um, in addition to that, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about closing costs this morning. That is the second most popular question that um, I am approached with whenever I speak with a buyer. First, it's what's the rate? And the second, what are the fees? What are the costs? So there are two separate categories of costs or fees for closing. One are the fees for closing because it does cost money to buy a house. So you have your appraisal, credit, lender fees, um, condo questionnaires, employment verification forms, all of those things that um, buyers have to pay for. And then the separate category or the second category are funds that you need for closing. And this is right up Silva's alley because she's always um, talking to me about this, are the funds that you pay because now you are a happy homeowner. So you pay property taxes to the town or you reimburse the seller for the property taxes that they have prepaid or you put property taxes into your escrow account. You also have home insurance because you wanna make sure that you're protected um, in case of fire or anything like that so that you um, can rebuild your home if, if needed. So you do pay one year of homeowner's insurance upfront. You also put a couple of months in escrow. You put the money in escrow so that the lender always has money to make those payments on your behalf. So when, I, um, when people ask me to estimate what closing costs will run them, I always tell them it's about 2.55% of the purchase price. So if you have a $500,000 purchase, you're looking at about $13,000 for closing. If you would like more information about closing costs or would like to go into it in further detail, just give me a call. I'll put my number in the chat room. Thank you. Awesome, See you at Karen. one. Thank you, Karen. Awesome stuff always. All right, so 
don't miss that class today. I know I'm going to be there and it'll be great information for everybody. So we have some really cool stuff to talk about, don't we, Dan? Absolutely, we do. So um, the we month of have May. our month of May awards. Love this. How many people are ready for some crazy Record awards? Record breaking. Yeah. Awesome stuff. All right, Dan, you want to kick us off with uh, who's at the top of the list? All right. So why don't we start with uh, teams and we'll start with teams and units listed. How's that sound to you? Awesome. Fabulous. All right. So listing inventory is tight, right? So why not start with the teams that are that are listing the most houses? And in the month of May, we had Kim Kendall with Kendall Group Real Estate in third place. We had the Around Town Real Estate Group in second place. And we had the Matt Rose Realty Group in first place for the most units listed. <laughs> That's nice awesome, trip. Rick Scott. I like that high-tech <laughs> digital display. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I, I was just thinking the exact same thing. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, Matt Rose Realty Group with the, uh, with the number one listing team in the month of May. Great stuff. Awesome. Okay. So down in out of the Stanford Market Center uh, in third place teams, we had the Auslander Kassendorf group. Woohoo. In second place, we had the James Wood Realty Group. All right, James, nice going. And in first place, we had Adam Wagner Realty Group. So Adam Wagner, way to go. You can't see. There it is. <laughs> Um, Rick, Rick's like looking over the camera to see like, is it in the right place? It's perfect, Rick. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. So All right. first place, let's just say this, Dan. First place winners, you get your KW, tw your, your 20 KW bucks, right? Don't forget, got to rack up those 20 bucks and you can use them. You can go to make a camp. You can go to family reunion. You can buy a cool t-shirt. All right. Moving on. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to contracts written, right? These are the, these are the, the teams that put the most homes under contract in the month of may in third place we had kendall group real estate second place matt rose real estate group and in first place for the month of may we had the around town real estate group all right steve you're going to be popping champagne in westport you're not going to make it through the rest hey. of the day Come to Westport, guys. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, Dan, you know, did you say we're doing written, biz written business or closed? Written, written. Written, I'm sorry. Okay, written business down in Stamford. In third place, we had the Boxer Realty Group. Nice going, Jody and team. In second place, we had Adam Wagner Realty Group. All right, guys. And in first place, writing the most business was the Auslander Kassendorf Group. Yay, guys. <laughs> Right, you need to add that. All you guys. <laughs> All right. I hear Carlos in the background. Yeah. All right, closed units. Most closings in the month of May for teams. We had the Around Town Real Estate team in third place. And then the Kim Kendall Real Estate Group. And then in first place for the most closed units in the month of May, we had the Matt Rose Realty Group. <laughs> Woo! All right, Matt Rose, two-time winner this month of May. They had a big, big May. That's awesome. That's great. So down here in Stanford, we had in third place closed business, we had the Adam Wagner Realty Group. Nice going, guys. In second place, we had um, Maxwell Ernie's, the Baron Realty Group team um, in second place. And in first place, we had the Auslander Kassendorf Group with most closed business. Woo! All right. So what about those agents? What about all of our agents, Dan? You know, the month of May was a obviously it was our biggest month or second biggest month ever in the history of our organization. And um, the interesting thing about our awards this month is that we have three categories and three winners from each award for, for each category, which means we could have nine potential winners and we have nine different winners. 
Not a single repeat in any category, which is kind of crazy. That's the first time that's, that, that that's happened. Um, so, as usual, let's start with new listings. It's a tight inventory market, right? In third place for most new listings in the month of May, we had the amazing Randy Lynch. In second place, we had the amazing Amy Mosley. And in first place, the incredible Mr. David Brand. Most, most listings in the month of May. Elizabeth Boy, love it. That's great. Congrats, David. Okay, down here in Stamford, we had in third place with listings taken, we had Mary Russo. Mary, I know you've been working so hard. That's awesome. In second place, Linda Dunsmore, killing it in second place. And in first place, with most listings taken, this is pretty cool, Stephen Aliegro, commercial agent down here in Stanford. All right, Stephen, moving that commercial stuff. That's great. I love it. All right, written business, Dan. All right, written business. Again, three new winners, right? And this is for most contracts written in the month of May. In third place, we had Miss Lauren Oresto. In second place, we had Miss April Fury. And in first place, the incredible Mr. DiBiase. Awesome. Great month for Chris. He wrote so much business. I think he wrote something like $3 million worth of business. Um, and he's like, he's like already ready. He's ready to tap and uh, he, he's awesome. It's awesome. Huge, huge month in May. That's awesome. That's great. So down here in third place, we have uh, the wonderful, amazing teacher from yesterday, Kimberly Tapscott. Woohoo, Kimberly. In second place, we have Aaron Ramkalawan. Aaron, great job, buddy, in written business. And in first place, I am thrilled to announce for the first time in our award ceremony, we have Nelly Cordova. Nelly Cordova with the most written business in the month of May. Nelly, congratulations. <laughs> All right. I want to say, Dan, I want to say something about Nellie. Nellie joined our organization in March. She had some experience. She had experience in real estate, but she joined KW in March. She wrote nine pieces of business in the month of May. So that is incredible. That is awesome. What an incredible story. I love that. Congratulations, Nellie. All right. The big one closed units for the month of May. We obviously, as an organization, we closed more units this month or in the month of May than we ever have in any May prior, but the second most closed units in our entire history. And a big part of that is in all of that is because of all of your hard work, but let's, let's recognize those top three. So most closed units in the month of May, we had Miss Deb Lammerher in third place. In second place, we had Mr. David Harris. And in first place, we had Team Vicera, Kathy and Victor, Vicera, working together. Most closed units in the month of May. Love Ooh, it. Ooh. Kathy and Victor, they were living at closings. That's awesome. All right, down in Stanford, in third place, most closed transactions, Aaron Ramkalawan. Nice job again, Aaron. In second place, that wonderful teacher from yesterday, Kimberly Tapscott, killing it. Close, many, many closings. And in first place, Mr. Federico, Federico Martinez. That's a lot of closings, Dan. Yeah, it is. Um, all right, but you know what? You know which category we're going to end on, right? The one near and dear to all of our hearts. We've got our top profit share earners. These are the people that have taken time over the years to grow their profit share trees and are living that passive income lifestyle. Here with us, just, just in, in third place here, we have somebody who's been with us only for a year, but came on board with a big team and has helped grow his, pro his, his profit share tree from the first day he joined. And that is Mr. Andy Sachs. Now, the number two and number one winners for Profit Share are both people that have been with us for a long time and have grown it slowly over time. Where and we have and they're typically at the top of our profit share list. We have the Benninsons in second place. And in first place, we have the Viseras, number one profit share earners in the month of May.
<laughs> I like I like that you added the money to that to that sign list. You actually did print two different signs for Kathy and Winter. <laughs> Very observant. That's awesome. Boy, the Viseras go, going to closings and getting profit share in their account. What a great month. That's great. Down here in Stanford, we have in third place, we have Jody Boxer breaking in the profit share. In second place, we have Mr. Todd Oslander, also mega profit share earner. And in first place, really doing amazing, bringing referrals to myself and Carlos, Mr. Len Schwartz, the most profit share in the month of May. So Dan, speaking about profit share, don't we have a class coming up when we're going to really dive into profit share and really get our profit share club going, right? A team. Exactly. So for those of you who don't know, we, Steve and I are going to be starting a profit share team or a profit share group, if you want to call it that, right? Where we're going to be working with a small group of agents that are dedicated to growing their profit share trees. We're going to be launching our first meeting on the 18th of June. I believe that's at one o'clock, Rick. All right. One o'clock on the 18th. It's a Friday. Um, Steve and I are going to be launching our profit share group. So if you have any interest in growing your profit share tree, starting to earn that passive income or growing your passive income, please reach out to either of us and be there on the 18th. All right. Cool. Um, and if you're looking to get into, to, to be one of our monthly award winners, jump into our training, right? Let's, let's help you, let, let us help you grow your business. All right. Um, and then let's get out there and sell some real estate. Yeah. Look for more information on the profit share team, guys. Uh, you're going to, you're going to want to be in it. So, all right. Adonis, Marty Miller, what has he got for us? And today, Marty Miller has got all kind of awesomeness for us. He's going to talk about archiving, restoring. Honest, we lost you. Oh, I was muted that whole time. No, <laughs> Dan, I was giving like the best intro of all time. You should have seen it, man. There was like light <laughs> and stuff behind me. It was awesome. Anyway, today I'll just give you a regular version. We're going to talk about <laughs> archiving, restoring, and uh, exporting your contacts in a database way. Go ahead, Marty. Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 5.0. And today is day eight. So we've been spending a lot of time inside of contacts recently, and we are going to make no exception today, but recently we've really been talking about adding contacts. And what I haven't shown you is the ability to archive, export, or delete contacts. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. So from within an actual contact card, if you open a specific contact, you do have the ability to archive a contact one at a time. So if this is someone that no longer belongs in your database and you're filtering or searching for this specific individual, I can click on archive. It's going to ask me, am I sure? And I could say, yes, I want to archive that contact. It would then bring up our next contact. If for any reason I wanted to do that in bulk, I believe I showed you this yesterday with bulk actions, and yet you can click on multiple and then choose to archive all three of these contacts. And you'll see it'll ask me, are you sure? And I'll say, yes, I am. Now, if for any reason you happen to archive one or more contacts by accident, you can come back into your settings menu and you're going to go into command settings, contacts, contact archive, and that will show you those four contacts that you just archived. If you want to restore them, you would just click on the restore button and if you want to do that in bulk inside of this option, you can click all four or you can just click on the checkbox next to and it'll select all four. And then I can choose to restore those selected contacts. In addition, you do have the ability to permanently delete contacts. That is a two step process. So we're going to go back through and we're going to archive contacts. And then you probably notice that from within that settings menu, I also had a choice to delete permanently. So I'm going to go back to settings, 
command settings and contacts and you will see contact archive here are our three contacts and I can choose to delete permanently all of them or if I hit the trash can it'll delete one at a time and it's going to tell you this will permanently delete these guys there is no getting them back after this point are you sure and you can click on OK from there in addition, if you're still early on in your database and maybe you brought in an import that went sideways or you just kind of want to start over, you're having issues, there is a function called the database wipe. And you'll see that again underneath our settings, command settings and database wipe. What this basically will do is it will archive all of your contacts at once. From there, when you go into contact archive, you would see your entire database here and then you could go through and delete them permanently. Now, the max view for Contact Archive is 50, so you would have to click on the box, it would select a max of 50, and then you would delete. Now, if you have several thousand contacts, that may take some time, but just a heads up, that is one way to completely archive and then go through and slowly, completely delete your entire database. Um, do realize that if you have a contact in the archive, the email that is associated with that contact is still associated with command. So you, if you attempt to add a new contact or re-import a contact with that email address, you will get an error. Typically it'll say email in use. Oftentimes you'll go into your contacts and not be able to find that email. Come to find out it's actually hanging out in your archive. So just something to be aware of there. That's archive and delete. The last thing I wanted to show you today is the ability to export contacts. So if you have a selected view of contacts, in this case, we've got all 231. I could click on the checkbox to select all 231. Then I can come over to the three dots here and you can see that I've got opportunities to export all contacts or export mailing labels depending on what format I want those mailing labels in either CSV or PDF format. Now one quick note this is as an individual agent you would have this permission because all contacts are your contacts as an individual agent. If you are on a team it's important to note that if you have standard permission levels you do not have the ability to archive, delete, or export any of the team contacts. So that's just kind of a uh, team-based permission setup, just so that you don't ever accidentally delete a contact that's owned by the team. Only the Rainmaker or those with unlimited or enhanced permission levels would have that uh, functionality. If you're not familiar with how teams work in Command, I do have an entire Teams mini-series on my YouTube channel. You feel free to welcome, or you're welcome to go watch all of those videos to give you a little more insight on how that would work. That's it for today, guys. Day eight, archive, export, restore, database wipe, and that's it. Hope Excellent. So that's good stuff, right? Did you enjoy that? So tomorrow we're going to talk about viewing, adding, and filtering neighborhoods for contacts and command. But don't forget, the greatest thing you can experience with command is today at 11 o'clock with Debbie or command for the MREA. That's not open to just millionaire real estate agents. Anybody can come to this class. You'll be with All right, Adonis was so excited, he froze in time. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, guys.